For the purposes of this example, I'm using Blender 2.82 in order to just kind of demonstrate what it was like in the previous hard op. So if we tap into edit mode, we can right click and use subdivide a couple of times. And I'm just gonna select this single point and then the older queue menu will go under operations where circle is just a little bit too far away from my liking and we'll just hit circle. And as you see, we're, we're jumped into the scale maneuver and there is no rolling the mouse to adjust it because this isn't a modal where you're actually able to adjust things. It's just a scale. We've turned it into a circle and we scaled it. However, in my preferences, I actually have my operator setting set too low on the division count. So as a result, whenever I use circle, it um, comes out a little weirder. So now I'm able to get it to be a little bit more rounded. If I wanted to get it even more rounded, I would undo it again. And I would go in and just keep adjusting this till I got the circle I want. And then I'm able to use it. So this was what things were like just as a result of the last version. And this is actually an improvement because this tool was pretty broken for a while. In fact, uh, even as of, you know, Neodymium, you were able to uh, select your verts and quickly turn them all to circles, press I, press Alt S, press I, and just do what was needed. And this was kind of what I would consider a minimal viable product. It, it was working, but it wasn't working to the level I wanted it to. And then of course, uh, with, with circle in order to use it, you must enable the loop tools add on, which is built in the blender in order to solve for the circle. But just so you know, this has been improved dramatically um, over the course of the last couple of releases. So if we go into our cube and we tap into edit mode, we can right click and subdivide and I'll press shift R to repeat. And if we just select a single vert, we can press Q and you can see that circle is now on main street, meaning that you can get to circle quickly. And you can also see that launching circle will put you in a modal and you can see that scrolling the wheel will allow you to adjust the segments. And I cannot begin to say how grateful I am that circle has finally been improved. It's been something I've held over the coders heads uh, forever. Just saying, you know, just make a better circle than me. You know, it's crazy that I'm the guy who ended up making the circle that's in the final version of this product. So you can also make a multiple selection and we can quickly just jump that to a circle. We could press I and there's even more to circle than that. We'll mess with the auto smoothing just to get it right. We can select the top vert and just press control plus and we'll press control plus again. And I'm just going to subdivide the top, but I'll press control numpad minus to shrink my selection. And while hovering over circle, let's just read the tooltip. We have control clicking to convert the nth vert to a circle. So if we click that, we can see that now we're able to get a checker pattern with circles. And this is one of my favorite ways to work and just manually create circles. In fact, box cutter has the circle drawing tool, which works so good, but hops has the circle counterpart tool, which I find to be a little bit more fluid and a little bit more manual in its control, but also just as good. And both of them have their uses. In fact, one of my favorite ways to approach circle is to just take a circle, uh, do the old extrude cancel and then scale it inwards and then just rotate it at an angle, maybe pull it more inwards and just, you know, work on my angular circle game. I always feel like I can make better angular circles. So I'm always experimenting with ways of making a circle, bringing it inwards at an angle, and then selecting the boundary loops of this uh, protective area and just beveling that to kind of loan it more geometry to hold the form together. And we can see that this is a slightly more interesting result. And because we still have edge flow, we can go in here, add a loop cut, bevel it, and just extrude that down to get a inset and then bevel one side to just get a really interesting formation. So I just wanted to show just kind of one of the ways that I get in and use circle to kind of extend on this while we're talking about edit mode tools is we can select just this edge and just duplicate it out on the Y and go to vert mode and select a single vert and we'll select this vert, this vert, press E, Y in order to extrude. And then we'll select those two points where the hit begins and press control shift B to bevel it real simply. And basically this is the shape we've created, just some basic polygon modeling and we'll press Q and use curve extract. So by default curve extract will extract you as a curve. 
And the reason that we beveled it simple is because the geometry is simple and we can just press control two to put a subdivision on it. The smoothing has broken down a little bit, but the quickest way to adjust smoothing to me is to just go under the Q options. And in this case, since it's still a curve, we'll adjust the curve and just press S. I was gonna say we could also go under object and choose shade smooth, or we could go under the hops button, but we don't yet have a selection menu for curves at this time. So if we press Q and we adjust curve, we can bring that in and we can just keep messing with this shape using some of the tools that we're talking about today. For example, we just use curve. We also have the ability to hover over curve extract to see that shift clicking will turn this into an extraction. And by doing so, we could just quickly extract this out and then control click bevel to just make this into a new auxiliary piece we can be begin playing off of. By alt clicking sharpen, we can quickly use weighted normal. But if you're more of a traditional user, you can always go under add modifier and just click weighted normal to add a weighted normal. But for that reason, it is added to sharpen under alt to quickly allow you to just get in there and just add a weighted normal on the fly, making sharpen the ultimate mega tool. But today I just wanted to talk about just using uh, curve and extract as well as circle and just how to um, get started with some of the uh, edit mode tools and why the Q menu is aligned the way it is. Another ability of extract is the ability to basically use control to get just a new selection from it. Just basically duplicate the piece, rip it off and select it. And the amount of keystrokes and clicks and misclicks that this saves is just astronomical. If we press Alt V and we were to look at this wireframe, my next thought would be to press Q and hit it with a 2D bevel. But you can see that with these lines going um, up and down on it, that that just won't work out right. I mean, it could work out right. We could just continue from here, but I'm a bit of a perfectionist, So that means that this isn't acceptable. We will right click and cancel. We can go under our Q menu and under add modifier, we will decimate it, simplifying the form. And then we can actually bevel to our heart's content. And then finally to just add a little bit of thickness, um, we could either go under our add modifier and just add solidify, or we could even do something like go into hops tool and just use solidify and just grab it by the dot and just adjust the amount of thickness that we're given this interactively. So we do try to provide multiple options for getting users to their destination with certain things, but that'll wrap it up for this cursory overview of circle curve polygon extract and, you know, uh, polygon duplicate.